Joining me now, Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney, now law professor at the University of Alabama, MSNBC legal analyst and host of the Sisters in Law podcast, and Ryan Riley, NBC News justice reporter and author of the book Sedition Hunters, How January 6th Broke the Justice System. So as I welcome you both, um, Joyce, even if everyone at DOJ is not on board with these so-called revenge prosecutions, can an attorney general Gates, can he still make it happen? So attorney generals can set priorities. Um, and certainly the top tier of DOJ appointees, uh, people who hold the assistant attorney general level, those will be folks that Donald Trump has selected. The problem is that to do a prosecution, you need line prosecutors, people who know how to get into the courtroom and do a case. And even if you can find folks like that who are willing to abandon principle, you still have to convince a grand jury to indict, uh, a trial jury to convict, a judge to go along with it. And so, Alex, much like what we've seen in the area of these threatened military prosecutions last night over Afghanistan, again, this is less a, a goal of engaging in legitimate prosecutions and more an effort to threaten people, to force them into alignment with Donald Trump, to demand their allegiance and their obedience in advance. We should identify it for what it is. This is not any form of legitimate investigation or prosecution. But, but hang on, would there be a problem, Joyce, right from the very get-go? Because can they even be prosecuted based on the Supreme Court ruling that the president, right, the president joins immunity for official acts? Does it stand to reason then that immunity would extend to all federal officers making official decisions in various government agencies at the direction of the president? So, look, there's no derivative immunity that's yet been established based on the presidential immunity decision. Some people suspect that that may be coming, that people may say, well, because I was speaking with the president about official government business, I, too, am entitled to immunity. We haven't seen that yet. And, you know, it would, I think, be um, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and see consequences that would impact other conduct. We want prosecutors to live up to the Justice Department's ethical standards to follow the rule of law, to obey their oath to the Constitution, and not to rely on this sort of off-brand immunity. Yeah, point well taken there. So, um, Ryan, when it comes to the January 6th rioters, what are your sources anticipating for those whose cases are, are still pending? Yeah, what's so interesting is that, in some ways, a lot of the January 6th supporters in that community are on the same page as DOJ lawyers about what Matt Gates would mean for the Justice Department. You know, I had one uh, wife of the actual the first January 6th defendant to go to trial describe him as a wrecking ball. Of course, she meant that in a good way, whereas DOJ employees, I don't think, are, are on the same page uh, necessarily with that being good. Um, so they're, you know, they are shared in this idea that Matt Gates would be a really disruptive force um, if he were uh, to be confirmed. But Certainly, you know, if you're looking at these next 60 plus uh, days, how we long we have until uh, President Trump is is inaugurated, uh, what the SLUs, at least the online SLUs, are trying to do is get as many of these assault on law enforcement cases over the line as they possibly can and pushing the FBI uh, to do as many of those as they can. Because right now, if you went to the FBI's website, and looked at their capital violence page, you would see more than 70 people who have been, who are uh, pictured on that site, who have already been identified, whose names are in the hands of the FBI. Um, so if you're worried about what, you know, this could mean for the future going forward, they want to get as many of those arrested as they can mm -hmm. before that, because that at least creates a record uh, of what these folks did, regardless of whether or not Donald Trump decides uh, to pardon them or dismiss these cases but, but or let, orders his Justice Department folks let, let to dismiss Let me pick up on, on the pardons, Ryan, because after Trump promised on the campaign trail to issue blanket pardons to rioters, a campaign spokesperson told you President Trump will make pardon decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. What's going on there? Yeah, I was surprised that they stuck with that language, right? Because now we're post-election. Um, April, when I talked to them back in April, they said sort of the same thing, and they're still going by case by case. But remember, that's his campaign team. Or that's the transition team now. Um, that's not Donald Trump himself. Um, and so there's often a divide between what, you know, sort of the, I guess, adults in the room are, are trying to do and what Donald Trump ultimately decides to do. Uh, so that is still, I think, a very much uh, sort of thing that's up in the air about whether or not they're actually going to do these sort of blanket pardons or not.
Okay. Uh, Joyce CNN reports Trump's transition team is skipping FBI checks for some of his administration picks, adding they believe the FBI system is slow and the intrusive background checks sometimes turn up embarrassing information used to inflict political damage. What, why is this problematic and how many do you think might have difficulty getting security clearances? Right. So I think that's the point, Alex, the fear that these background investigations could turn up, let's say, embarrassing, I might say disqualifying information. We've already seen that Trump's team has not done um, a great job of vetting some of their candidates. The nominee for defense, it has already come to light that he had paid a woman who alleged that he sexually assaulted her. He denies that and said that he paid her a nuisance settlement, but apparently that wasn't known by the transition team or by Trump before he was nominated. So that suggests, I think, a very sloppy process for these important level of positions. Look, there's only one reason that you back away from this normal background security clearance procedure, and that's because you think your nominee can't clear the hurdle. And to the extent that some clearances take a longer time, that can be the case when people have problematic backgrounds, when they're born overseas. But let me tell you something, when the uh, administration has a nominee who's they want to get in office, they're able to get the FBI to turn that around incredibly quickly. Hmm. So it's nonsense to say that that's the reason it's not being done. Okay. Joyce Vance, Ryan Riley, always good to talk with you both. Thank you, guys.